What the heck is this? The room is covered in dust. You're just trying to get out of doing housework because you're sick, aren't you? You know I like things clean. For God's sake! Even if you had to sneak out of the hospital, you should come home and do housework properly. The person I call my husband is probably not a human, but a demon or something. Otherwise, there's no way he would say such foolish things to his wife, who is in the hospital with cancer. But what a waste this ignorant man is! Excuse me, but your wife is now. The doctor's words were just the beginning of this man's descent into hell. My name is Sarah, a 35-year-old office worker. I've been married to my husband Kenny for almost three years now. I'd like to say that we have a wonderful married life, but the truth is we don't. Work is enjoyable, and it feels great when hard work pays off and gets recognized. But the problem lies at home. When I come home exhausted, it's Kenny who's already home and greets me. Is delivery okay for dinner? Kenny answers me. Hey, even though you have a job, don't you think you're slacking off too much? Here, look at this. He shows me a photo of a dinner table with fancy dishes. By the way, he's shown it to me dozens of times. It all started about two years ago when Kenny attended his high school reunion. I want to unify the furniture and make the room look like this. See? My husband showed me a stylish room photo that looked like a model house. It seems he went to a friend's house for drinks after a reunion. His friend lived in a high-rise condo, and my husband seemed to envy that room. However. The friend was a successful young businessman, and our household income was not high enough to live a similar lifestyle. Moreover, my husband said he wanted to move out. He wanted to live in a room that cost twice the rent of our current apartment. So, where are we going to get the money for that? My husband said to my cold reaction, "We'll manage it somehow, you know. I mean." We're both working, so we'll figure it out, right? Finally, I got angry with my husband, snickering and said, "Enough already! Do you even understand the concept of living within our means? From now on, you should pay for your beer with your own pocket money." He glared at me, maybe because I was scary, and muttered, "What? I was just joking." You're such a buzzkill. He was mumbling for a while, but I was sure he wasn't joking. We continued to bicker, and I started to experience stomach pains and other stress-related symptoms. I thought it was just stress until something strange happened to my body. I started bleeding, even though it wasn't my period, and it wouldn't stop. I went to a nearby hospital. And was diagnosed endometrial cancer. Hearing the diagnosis, my body shivered, even though it wasn't cold. Then, the doctor said something that made it worse. Do you plan to get pregnant in the future? It was a severe condition, and the best option was to remove the uterus. I, I will talk to my husband. I couldn't stop crying while driving home. If I lost my uterus, I wouldn't be able to have children ever. I wonder what Kenny's reaction will be. He loves children, so I'm afraid of getting divorced. When my husband returned home, I talked to him about the test results, treatment, and his thoughts. We took the time to have a conversation for the first time in a while. My husband was very shocked, but we made a decision. After that. I took a leave of absence from work, and my treatment began. In the end, we decided to undergo chemotherapy after having my uterus removed. On the day of the surgery, my husband took the day off and accompanied me to the hospital. I felt uneasy about my husband's oddly cheerful mood. However, 
I overcame major surgery and lost my uterus. During my hospital stay, colleagues and friends came to visit me. I felt sad that a friend with a child came to visit me. My in-laws who lived nearby also came to visit me. You did well, Sarah. After those words of encouragement, my mother-in-law said, "I know it's tough, but please take care of the household finances and chores a little more carefully." My father-in-law immediately interrupted her, "Hey, stop it! Not now, Sarah. Never mind, okay?" I had no idea what their conversation meant at that time. As for my husband Kenny, he always seemed to be in a good mood whenever he visited me in the hospital. Sarah, you might be surprised when you get discharged. Well, look forward to it. I thought I would be happier about anyone who came to visit me, rather than a surprise. After a while, I was scheduled to be discharged temporarily and was excited to return home. I would be admitted to the hospital again soon. For chemotherapy, when my husband picked me up from the hospital, he said, "Don't be surprised when you see inside the house." I had a feeling of unease. What? What is this? As soon as I entered the house, I was shocked. The inside of the house had changed drastically from before I was hospitalized. The previously fresh and white-themed rooms. Turned into a sleek black-themed one. The sofa and table that I liked, as well as the rug that was on the floor, were all gone. Everything had been replaced with furniture that my husband liked. What surprised me even more was that all the appliances, including the washing machine and refrigerator, had been replaced with new black ones. I was frozen in shock at the sight. How's that? Pretty amazing, right? I did it all by myself. At my husband's smug remark, I felt like collapsing. I hurried to the bedroom. Once inside, it was clear that it was also completely different from before. My wardrobe. Oh no. Where's my wardrobe? At my words, my husband's face grew anxious. Oh, Dad. Sorry, I guess I got carried away and threw it away. My patience finally ran out with my husband's nonchalant chuckling. What? You threw it away? Don't joke around. Do you remember how important that wardrobe was to me? I told you that, didn't I? Bring it back here now. Give it back. With every shout. My wound throbbed with pain. My husband stayed silent for a moment before speaking. I said I already threw it away, so there's nothing I can do. You're so annoying. He then stormed out of the room. I collapsed into a sitting position in the now unrecognizable room. I didn't want to cry, but tears flowed down on my face anyway. The truth was. That the wardrobe was a precious gift from my mother when I got a job and left home. My parents had divorced when I was in elementary school, and I had lived with my mother ever since. She had passed away in a traffic accident not long after I got married. That wardrobe was an irreplaceable moment of my late mother. Of course, I had told my husband about it many times. Life had been a living hell until my next hospitalization. I had been looking forward to coming home so much, but my husband had been in a bad mood and barely spoke to me since then. Not only that, but he demanded that I do the housework, even though my wounds were still hurting. Don't ask the impossible. I'm in the recovery period, and I need to rest. You should take care of yourself. After that day, my husband began to harass me. He only cared about himself. He would intentionally wash only his own clothes, and avoid washing mine. When he brought food, he would eat it in front of me, as if flaunting it. 
I was tired of his childish behavior and didn't have the energy to deal with him. So I turned to my friends for support. On the day of my red mission, my husband did not accompany me to the hospital, and I went alone. Chemotherapy was much harder than I imagined. I was shocked to see my hair falling out day by day, in addition to nausea. As for my husband, he went on a long business trip shortly after my admission. I thought he would contact me out of concern, but he didn't contact me at all during my hospitalization. One day, my phone rang continuously, and I hesitated to answer because I no longer had the energy to talk to my husband. Then, my husband called the hospital out of impatience. I switched to speaker call. What the heck is this? The room is covered in dust. You're just trying to get out of doing housework because you're sick, aren't you? You know I like things clean, for God's sake. Even if you have to sneak out of the hospital, you should come home and do housework properly. The nurse who brought the phone looked tense. Then the unexpected person who responded to my husband's foolish words was. Excuse me, but your wife just left the hospital a moment ago, and is currently busy with procedures. Can you please not disturb her with nonsense talk? What? Um, um, um. Who do you think you were to speak like that? You can clean the house yourself. In all my years as a doctor, I've never met such an ignorant person like you. I'm disgusted. The doctor hung up the phone, leaving my husband flustered. Later, the doctor explained to me that he had a doctor and had become emotional, and he apologized for his rudeness. I told him not to worry, and that I planned to divorce my husband anyway. After being discharged, I went to a certain place, and my husband came into the room, looking upset. "Mom, Dad." What are you doing here? My husband stood there, silently, without offering any words of comfort upon seeing me. My mother-in-law coldly said to him, "We went to pick her up because today was the day of her discharge." Sit down over there, Kenny. My husband's eyes flickered, as if he had something to hide, and he was visibly shaking. You have something to apologize to Sarah and us, don't you? My mother-in-law asked my husband, who remained silent. You asked us for financial assistance, claiming that Sarah spends money recklessly. Was it all lies, wasn't it? Explain. My furious father-in-law's voice echoed through the room. It turned out that my husband had told a very malicious lie. During my second hospitalization, my in-laws told me something. I know this is not the time to discuss it, Sarah, but we want to make it clear that this will be the last time we lend you money. My mother-in-law told me. I was stunned. Excuse me, what is this all about? That was when we first realized that my husband was lying. My in-laws thought it was strange that my husband would come begging for money, even when I was hospitalized. Then he begged them for help with my hospital expenses, claiming that they were too expensive. I immediately knew where my husband's money was going. If you come to our house, you'll find out right away what Kenny is spending the money on. I told my in-laws, giving them the key to our house. They returned to the hospital, surprised by what they had seen. I have no intention of continuing to live with your son as a married couple. I'm divorcing him. What I can't forgive the most is that he got rid of the wardrobe my mother gave to me. What do you mean, the wardrobe? You're saying that Kenny threw away your mother's wardrobe? No, I will never forgive him for what he's done to you. I told my mother-in-law, who grasped my hands in tears, "I can't and I won't spend my life with you anymore. I mean, I would slap you right now 
if I wasn't still recovering. My voice trembled with anger, and my husband retorted, "No, divorce is too extreme. You must be happy that your room looks stylish, right? You should be grateful." The house was pitch black, and my heart was sinking. We managed our living expenses through joint incomes in my husband's account, while saving for the future in mine. We had saved up for when we had a child. When I was diagnosed with cancer, he had become selfish, thinking that he could use the money however he wanted, since I could no longer bear children. That made me extremely sad. Don't you understand how much I care for you, Sarah? This is wrong. You can't divorce me. I looked at my crying husband with a cold gaze. Then, my mother-in-law, who was sitting next to me, shouted at him, "Shut it, Kenny! You treated Sarah so horribly, and you should know that. Even though I lost my hair and weight, you, Kenny, haven't shown any concern for me. You've only been thinking about protecting yourself." I can't be with someone like that anymore. My husband remained silent, hanging his head. After a while, we divorced. Thanks to the effort to my ex-in-laws, the division of property were in my favor. My ex-husband reluctantly repaid the money he had borrowed from his parents, a sum of thirty thousand dollars. Although we had just finished remodeling our house. My ex-husband couldn't afford to live there alone on his salary, and decided to move out. He now lives in the shabby apartment that he had to borrow money to pay for. I have a friend who works at the same company as my ex-husband. I heard that he is now labeled as a dangerous person who harasses his wife, who is battling cancer. He brought it upon himself. He can regret it for the rest of his life. As for me, I am enjoying living alone for the first time in years, while undergoing regular checkups. Once my physical strength stabilized a bit more, I plan to return to work. My boss has assured me that it's okay to do it at my own pace, which I'm grateful for. I'm just so glad my mother's wardrobe has been returned to me. I found it at an antique shop. When I brought in some my unwanted item after moving, it was what my mother gave me, and it may not have been an expensive piece of furniture, but it was the only memento that I cherished. On the back corner of the wardrobe was my late mother's writing, "Sarah, always be happy." I've tried my best to remember my mother's words and worked hard. Of course. That won't change in the future.